What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another swatch and review for you. So today we are talking all about Essie Spring 2022. I actually have three different collections from them. So we have their regular line of nail polishes. We also have their Expressy line, which is their quick dry polishes. And then we have their Gel Couture line, which contrary to the name is not actually gel polishes. They do dry by air, but it's a gel like formula. So in total, we actually have 25 polishes to go over. It's a very big swatch and review. But before we get into it, if you haven't heard of Essie before, I'd be very surprised because they're a very popular nail polish brand, <laughs> but they are a mainstream salon brand that is eight free, meaning they are free of eight of the potentially harmful ingredients that are often found in nail polish. They are vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients. And on their website, they are listed as an not testing their products on animals, which would make them cruelty free. So we'll go over the individual collections first, but then at the end, I'm also going to show you a comparison of all 25 polishes together, just because there are a couple of similarities and potential overlaps, and I want you to be able to see them side by side. So yeah, let's start with the regular line of polishes. It's a nine polish collection and it's called Swoon in the Lagoon. We have a lot of traditional springy colors, a lot of these peachy oranges, pinks, soft green kind of colors. So let's dive into that first and roll the footage. So as with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today I am using the Cuccio base coat. So we'll start off with the shade Natural Connection, and this is a really beautiful soft sage green cream shade. And let me tell you, this was the first out of all 25 that I tried, and I gasped when I applied this color. The opacity on this is absolutely unreal. It's a little bit deeper than a pastel shade, so I wasn't expecting it to be super sheer, but I was still super impressed that it was just one coat for full coverage. Obviously I do have short nails, so something you wanna keep in mind if you have longer nails, it'll probably take more coats, but this is what it looks like in two coats and I was very impressed. Next up we have the shade Willow in the Wind, which is a really stunning green cream. I'm actually not even 100% sure how to describe this. I feel like it's somewhere between an olive green and a chartreuse green. And it is, again, really stunning, very opaque. It wasn't quite as opaque as Natural Connection, but it did give me full coverage in two coats and it was really opaque in the first. So I think shades like this that are almost there in the first coat are really good to use for nail art just because of that opacity. Next up, we have the shade Ripple Reflect, and this is a sky blue cream shade. And again, just really impressive. I have to say, as a person who didn't use Essie for years, I am just really impressed with their new formulation. I think in general, especially these more basic, simple colors are very self-leveling and very opaque. This one was almost there in the first coat again, but it gave me full coverage in two. And as you can see, they're all very self-leveling and that wide flat brush makes application incredibly easy. Next up, we have the shade Swoon in the Lagoon, the namesake of the collection and it's a really beautiful fuchsia shade. Now, this one's a little bit interesting. I would say it was really opaque as well, almost a one coater, but for some reason it was giving me a little bit of a jelly-like feel to it. Even though it did cover up my visible nail line, it still felt a little squishy, if that makes any sense. I'm not really sure, but hopefully you can see on application what I mean. It was a very high gloss, very self-leveling, and again, really nice opacity, even though for some reason I was getting a little bit of a jelly vibe here. Moving on, we have the shade Day Drift Away, and this one is a super, super light peachy salmon kind of color, but it's a little bit lighter than that. I would say it's almost like a beige salmon kind of color going on here. Really beautiful. I was actually pretty impressed with the opacity on this one. It ended up giving me full coverage in two coats, which I was not expecting because I think for lighter shades like this, they tend to be a little bit less opaque, but I thought it looked great in two coats on my short nails. And it was also very self-leveling and very easy to work with. Next up, we have the shade Boatloads of Love. And this one is a really beautiful buff beige shade. It's almost like a cream slash linen kind of color and it actually has this really interesting intense cobalt blue shimmer running throughout and in the bottle I was so excited when I saw this one but it is so incredibly faint on the nail you can't even see it on camera and you can barely see it in real life it's just a tiny little tinge of blue in there and I think it is really fun I think this type of shade would be a fun bridal color because it's like bridal cream linen color but it also has the something blue in there but 
but I wasn't too thrilled with the formula, especially considering all the other colors in this collection. I know that shades like this tend to be three coaters just because they're lighter and that's what I expect from a brand like Essie, but I feel like even in three coats, it was just barely opaque and I might want a fourth on a color like this because I just felt like it was a touch patchy. Next up, we have the shade All or Nothing and this is a really beautiful, slightly dusty, light orange cream shade. This looks like a little bit of a creamsicle color, but it has a little bit more of a yellow in there than your average creamsicle orangey kind of color. And again, we are just back to this incredible formula, super opaque, super self-leveling, perfect coverage in two coats, and this just feels like the perfect spring shade in my opinion. Next, we have the shade Frilly Lilies, and this one actually maybe is a more accurate description of like an orange creamsicle color. This one was also pretty hard to capture on my camera, so I did do a little bit of color correcting so it was color accurate but it is a really beautiful, slightly dusty, it almost is kind of like on the verge of being a pastel shade, and it's just this really nice soft orange cream. Again, really beautiful formula, very easy to work with, and again, just a really nice soft spring color, but it also has that nice bright life kind of vibe. I don't know what I'm saying. It's pretty. And the final shade of the Swoon in the Lagoon collection is this one, Row with the Flow, and it's a really beautiful orangey, medium brown cream shade. Again, a little bit difficult to capture. I would say that this one ended up looking a little bit more orangey on my nails than it looked in the bottle. It has a slight dustiness to it, but it definitely has a lot of that orangey yellow warmth to it, but I think it does look a little bit browner in the bottle than it ended up on my nails. It's still a really beautiful shade. I actually think the last three colors together just work so well. I feel like they would make a beautiful orangey gradient, but yeah, again, just really impressive formula. So here are all of the shades together in the first collection, and I am 100% in love with this color story. This is the type of color story that would make me love spring collections. I do not love the dusty pink, the dusty purple, the dusty blue altogether. This right here feels so springy to me. We have these soft, slightly dusty shades, but we also have these vibrant, nature-y colors, like that beautiful green, that pink shade, those gorgeous oranges. I absolutely love this color story. This is probably my favorite color story of spring 2022. Absolutely adore it. And I would say the vast majority of these had an incredible formula. So I was just really impressed all around. So now that we've seen those polishes, let's move into the Expressi line. This one is called Skate with Destiny. This line, we actually have 10 polishes in, and this is an interesting line of polishes. I didn't realize this when I first started reviewing Expressi. There their brush is actually slightly tilted. It's supposed to make for easier application. I didn't find it to be particularly easy, but I also didn't find it to be more difficult. So I would say I'm indifferent on the brush, but about this collection, it also feels pretty classically spring. We have some nice bright pops of color. It actually feels very similar to their Expressi Spring 2021 collection, but let me show you the polishes. So roll the footage. So first up in the collection, we have Keeping It Wheel, and this one is a very soft, dusty neutral shade. It has a little bit of this dusty rose coloring to it, and this is the type of shade from Essie that I would expect to be a three-coater, but I actually ended up getting this one fully opaque in two coats. I would say it was really just barely opaque in that second coat, so if your nails are any longer than mine, you would probably need a third coat for this, but I was pretty pleased with how it turned out. Next up, we have Trick Click, which is just a classic cool toned pink cream. I feel like this is a shade that is very hard to get wrong, especially for a mainstream salon brand. So this one worked pretty well for me. It was a two coater. It looked pretty nice on. One thing to note about the Expressi line is it does dry pretty quick. So you want to work quickly if you want it to level out. Next, we have the shade All Ramped Up, and this is a nice deep eggplant purple color, maybe a little bit warmer than an eggplant shade, but it does have that really beautiful maroon to purple coloring going on. It was actually surprisingly sheer in the first coat. You could see a lot of patchiness, but in that second coat, it evened out really nicely and it looked really beautiful on the nails. This is probably a color that I would be more likely to wear in the winter, but I think it's really beautiful regardless. Next up, we have the shade Skin 
Skate with Destiny, and this one is a really pretty periwinkle that leans a little bit on the blue side. And this one, I have to say, I haven't used or owned Essie Bikini Sotini in many, many years, honestly, probably since college, but this color feels like a cream version of that. I could be completely wrong because, again, I don't even remember fully what that color looked like, but that was the reminder that I got from this shade. But I have to say about this one, the opacity was just not there. This is what it looked like in two coats and it was still pretty patchy so I ended up needing to do a third coat which I was really not impressed with. I think this kind of shade is dark enough that it should be fully opaque in two coats. So wasn't too thrilled with that but it's a pretty shade. Next up we have the shade Left on Shred and this one is a navy blue cream shade and I actually really love colors like this. I love a deeper blue that doesn't look so dark that it looks black in low lightings. I like when it's very distinctly blue and this color is just perfect for that. It's nice and deep but it's also not too deep to feel like a wintry kind of shade. You know what I mean? I think in the last year or two we have really been seeing a lot of navy blue for spring and I am 100% here for it. Navy blue is my favorite color. I love wearing it on my nails. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and this is a pretty good color so I'm on board with it. Next we have the shade Street Wear and Tear and this one is a pretty vibrant teal. Again, I was having this sort of feeling like it was a jelly-like formula in this polish, but it still managed to give me full opacity in two coats. Now you'll probably notice that I had a wonky brush in this one. The bristles were just sticking out. In cases like this where it's not too severe, I usually just take a little manicure scissor and cut off the offending bristles, but if you bought a bottle like that and you are not pleased with it, generally most companies will send you a replacement bottle if you just send them an email or DM for customer service. So if you see that, don't be alarmed. <laughs> Next we have the shade Just For Kicks, which is a beautiful soft sage green cream shade. And by now you're probably starting to think to yourself, wow, we have a lot of random repeats in this collection from the regular SE line. Well, don't you worry, I'm gonna compare all three of the collections side by side at the end and I'm going to put the similar shades next to each other so you can see what's going on. But this one is pretty similar. It's a little bit cooler toned and it does have that sort of jelly-like formula. Again, it was just barely opaque in those two coats. Next, we have the shade Daily Grind and this one is a sort of khaki beige cream shade. It looks like a buff beige color, but it has a sort of yellowy green undertone to it, which I think is pretty interesting. Now this one, the bottle brush was so wonky for, the bristles were really just sticking in every direction. So I didn't have the easiest time with application. I'm not sure if my difficulty with this polish was because of the brush or if it just wasn't opaque, but in two coats, this was so patchy. So I did end up needing a third coat. And even then I felt like it was just barely there and I would theoretically want a fourth coat for a polish like this, but I probably would not reach for a four coater in this shade. I just don't think it's worth it. So this one I was a little disappointed in. Next we have Curbside Pick Me Up and this one is a vibrant yellow cream shade. And I loved this one. A great turnaround from the beige shade that we just tried out. This one was a little bit sheer on the first coat, was almost there on the second. And honestly, if my nails were on the short side, I could probably get away with doing two coats of this one. But at this point, I am just so used to always doing three coats opacity for yellow nail polishes because the majority of them are three coaters on me. So I ended up going in with that. And I think if I hadn't overworked that second coat, it would look a little bit less patchy, but still three coats for a good yellow is pretty good to me. And this one is so vibrant. And the final shade in the Expressy line is Bearer of Red News, which which is a very bold orange cream shade. And this one's not quite a neon. I think it looks a little bit more saturated on camera than it was in real life, but this is a very vibrant, bright color. So I did enjoy it. 
I thought it was a pretty color to wear on the nails. It again had that sort of jelly-like feel to it and I was looking at it and I couldn't tell if it was fully opaque in two coats or if it was patchy. I think colors like this are sometimes so bright that it's hard to tell if they're fully opaque. So I did go in with a third coat just in case, but I feel like I would have to try it on like my thumb or a bigger nail like that to see if I could get away with two coat coverage on it because I am just not 100% sure. So here are all of the Expressy polishes together, and I have to say as a color story, I'm not totally in love with it. I think we do have some pretty shades here, but overall, the Expressy formula is just not my favorite. It actually reminds me a little bit of almost a slightly improved version of the old SE formula, the way that it used to be, which in my opinion was a little bit more sheer and a lot less self-leveling, and I think that's kind of what we get with the Expressy polishes, so I wouldn't necessarily reach for these anytime soon but like I said we have a couple of nice colors in here. So those are the Expressy polishes and now finally we have the Gel Couture line. Once again this is not a gel collection. You don't need to use a lamp or anything like that. It is regular polish but it's supposed to have a gel-like formula. So this collection is called Pattern Play. We've got six polishes and they're supposed to be 70s inspired. Now I have to say this collection confused me a little bit because I think these colors feel very distinct distinctly fall. So I'm not sure that it makes sense for them to come out in the spring. Potentially good for people in the Southern Hemisphere, but I'm not even sure how easy it is to get SE in the Southern Hemisphere. So definitely an interesting choice, but let's go ahead and show that as well. Quick side note about the Gel Couture line. This doesn't affect application at all, but I just wanted to show you that they do have a twisted brush in there. I think it's just so cool. Just a fun little detail that I thought I would share with you. <laughs> so we'll start off with Totally Plaid. This one is an olive green cream shade. Now that I'm saying that, I'm realizing that every single polish that I reviewed in this video is a cream finish, which may be a little bit boring to some, but creams are a classic. So I always appreciate them. But this is a really beautiful shade. It was a little bit sheer on the first coat, but it gave me full coverage in the second. It's a nice, slightly thicker formula, so it does give you that gel-like feel. I did find that it wasn't as self-leveling as the regular SE formula though. Moving on, we have All Checked Out, and this one is a warm brown cream shade. This is such a beautiful color. I feel like my camera for some reason makes these look a little bit more orangey reddish than they are in real life. This one I would say almost has a slightly purpley undertone to it. It is a really beautiful shade though and again really nice opacity in that second coat. Very slightly less self-leveling than I am used to but still a very gorgeous shade. Next up we have the shade Fab Florals and this one is a dusty autumnal orange cream shade and I gotta say I think this is actually even a little bit dustier than my camera shows. I feel like these colors feel so autumnal to me. They should have saved this collection for fall 2022 and I would have absolutely loved it. I do not see myself wearing shades that are this dark for spring, but that being said, this formula was incredible. It was pretty much a one coater, but here's what it looks like in two. Next up, we have the shade Electric Geometric and this one I actually love for spring. I never know how to describe this kind of color. It's sort of a mix between red, orange, and pink and it's just so vibrant. I love that they call this one electric geometric because this does feel like an electric vibrant poppy red orange pink kind of color and it is so beautiful and again really amazing opacity on this one this was a one coat full coverage shade on me and i think that mainstream brands like this tend to do these colors really well i don't know why but they do a good job of them and they're a classic shade next we have the shade chevron trend and this one is a a really beautiful deep pink cream shade. This is another one. I thought in the bottle that this was going to potentially be a good spring shade, but looking at it on the nail, I don't know if it's just the collection as a whole, because maybe separately I would see this as a spring or even summer color, but it just feels so deep and dark that I think this feels like such a fall color for me. So really gorgeous, good opacity, not very self-leveling, but I like it. And the final shade in this collection is Paisley All The Way, and this one is a deep orchid violet 
purple cream shade. So you can see this one was actually really, really sheer in the first coat, but it ended up giving me great coverage in the second. I was a little worried when I saw that first coat on, but it deepened up really nicely. It got that beautiful, vibrant, purpley color in there as well. And it looked really nice in two coats. Not much to say about it. It's a pretty simple color, but it did look nice. So here is the full pattern play collection. And like I said about a million times, this just feels so autumnal to me. I don't really understand why they went for this. I absolutely love fall nail polish colors. They're my favorite of the year, but it just feels like a weird release for this time of year. And here are all 25 shades together. I thought this was so interesting seeing all of them side by side and just seeing how many almost repeats we got, but they're all pretty different. I thought that we would have a bunch of dupes, but I feel like we have slight variations of all of these colors so that you can really kind of choose what specific type of color you're going for. Like look at that second row. There are so many different variations of orange. We have the dusty orange. We have the pastel orange. We have the vibrant orange. We have the yellowish orange. I just think they did a great job with that. And also, can we talk about the fact that there are four greens in these 25 polishes? is I could not be more pleased. So really cool seeing all of them side by side, actually. So those are all the polishes and then the comparison of all of the shades together. And I have to say overall, I think we have a lot of great shades, but if I had to pick between the three collections, my favorite is definitely the regular SE line. I actually used to not be a huge fan of the SE formula, but I feel like they have definitely improved in the years since I stopped using them, like back in 2015, 2016. So I'm definitely more impressed now with their formula, their opacity, and really just their consistency. But I, I still feel like I'm not totally sold on the Expressy line. I enjoy the gel couture polishes. I think they're great. I don't love when brands say that they are gel and when they're not gel. <laughs> That's kind of just a little pet peeve of mine, but it happens often enough that I kind of just let it go at this point. But I, I think the thing that's stopping me from liking the gel couture polishes the best is that I feel like these colors are just a little too autumnal for me to wear right now, but I have a feeling I'm going to revisit them in like August, September. So these polishes all come at different price points and it really depends on where you pick them up. All the prices that I'm going to be using are from Ulta because I figured that's just a good standard place to get your SE and that's where I'm going to link it down below. So the regular line of polishes comes in a 13.5 milliliter bottle and it retails for $9 USD. The Expressy line comes in a 10 milliliter bottle and that also retails for $9 USD on Ulta's website. And the Gel Couture line comes in a 13.5 milliliter bottle and it retails for $12 on the Ulta website. So I'm going to link all of that down in the description. You can check them out if you're interested. But yeah, I'm curious to hear from you guys, which of the three SE lines do you like the most? Which one of these particular collections do you like? And are there any that you're not really partial to? Leave it all in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Huge shout out to my cosmic admirals on Patreon, Amanda M, Rocketman's daughter, and Paula. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Caroline and Caroline wants to know what is something you feel like you found out about way too late in life and Caroline's example is that she just found out that ponies aren't baby horses. <laughs> Uh, I have to say, I think that one also held me back for a little while. I think one of the biggest things that I experience is that I don't know how to pronounce words that I've read a lot. So like, I'll know very well what they mean, but I've never heard them said out loud because I've just seen them from reading. So I, I think there's a lot of words that I have mispronounced in my life because I've just read them so much and I, I didn't realize. Yeah, I don't know. I can't, I can't think of anything else at the moment, but I would say word pronunciation is probably a big one for me. But whenever I'm doing like YouTube videos in general, if I don't 100% know the pronunciation of a word or even of a name, like you know how Zoya names polishes after people, I, I always look it up just because I like to be absolutely certain. You know, there is one thing that I, I, I can't, I actually don't even know. Are reindeer real or are they a fantasy creature? I'm gonna Google that. Cause I feel like I thought they were a fantasy, like, like a Christmas creation, but then I'm pretty sure they're real. Yeah. Okay. Reindeer are real. That's embarrassing. And I just did that live. <laughs>
I'll see you guys later. Bye.